Next class coming up. Exactly. No, it's not next class. All right. So to do a problem like this, the best way that I like to simply work through this is try to simplify these as much as possible. All right. And if you can simplify them at first, that's very helpful, Kevin. But if you can't, then you kind of get to a problem. So we're taking the third root, third root of negative 12 of a times b to the fourth. So can we simplify any terms inside of that radical? If you can, then you want to break it up. Can you write 12 to a third power? No. a to the third? No. b fourth to the third? No. And then we look in here. Can you write any of these to the third power? Huh? B times B times B. You could rewrite that as B cubed, yes. You could write that. Um, so that one you could rewrite there, but these two you could not, right? No. OK. So now what I'm going to do is I, I could simplify that, but that's really my only case. Um, but I'm just going to actually leave that in there. And what I'll do now is now let's use our product. You guys notice that we have a product, product on our radical. So let's apply the product rule of uh, radicals. So I could say 5 times the cube root of negative 12 times the cube root of a times, and exactly what, um, I would say, let's just do b to the fourth, times 3 times the cube root of 18 times the cube root of a squared times the cube root of b squared. Whew. Now, you guys always don't have to write all this out, but I'm writing exactly every single term so you guys can see exactly what I'm going to do. Now, just like we add in and subtract like terms, all right, when dealing with radicals, you can only multiply when you're having common like terms. So I can't multiply my a times my b and I'm going to get some different answer. If I want to go ahead and simplify this, all right, we can now rewrite this all under its same radical. But now let's rewrite, let's combine. Let's rewrite this so our b's are next to each other and our a's are next to each other. So let's rewrite this as 5 times the cube root of negative 12 times 18 times the cube root of a times a squared, which would be a cubed, times the cube root, cube root of b. That's 5 times 3, right? And that's going to be b to the 4 times b squared, which is b to the 6th power. So do you guys see what I kind of did here? I kind of did an extra step that I'm not going to require you guys to do. But what I want you guys to understand is if you break this all up, product, right? Product, it doesn't matter if you do 3 times 4 or 4 times 3, right? You can rearrange it however you want to. So since I'm just going to rearrange them, I'm going to rearrange them. So I'm multiplying my numbers, multiplying my a's, and multiplying my b's. Then. Does it now look like I might be able to simplify this a little bit further? Yeah, of course, right? Now it's in a way that I can do. So if somebody do 12 times 18 for me, I don't know what that value is. And then take the cube. Negative 216. So the cube root of that, I should know it, but I forget it's going to be 4? Negative 6? Six. Six. 6. Cube root? Negative 6. Negative 6. OK. So we have 15. This is the cube root of uh, negative 216 times the cube root of a cubed times the cube root of b to the sixth. Well, so we have 15. The cube root of negative 216 is negative 6 times the cube root of a cubed is just going to be a cubed. And the cube root of b squared, we can rewrite our b to the sixth is b squared cubed. So therefore, um, so we have 15 times negative 6 which is going to be a negative 90. So we have negative 90 a cubed times a squared. And that's going to be your final answer. OK? Oh, it is a. Thank you. The cube root of a squared, you're right. You're going to write that down. What is that? Negative 90. 